They can see culture itself as toxic in some cases. Of course, hippie culture is itself also a culture. It fails to realize that. Shaming and blaming is better than maiming, but it is far inferior to patiently raising others' consciousness and forgiving them for their ignorance. Some people aren't ready to change, and Green is a little bit unaware of that. In stage green, people begin to move away from the materialism of stage orange, and values switch from acquisition and social standing towards sustainability, virtue, positivity, and peace among people. Green is motivated by a genuine care for all cultures, people, and animals too. They love the environment and hate corporate America. They wish to reduce suffering and inequality and take actions to attempt to reduce these. With every stage, there are good and bad sides to it. Even the lowest levels have good sides and the highest levels have bad sides. I do want to preface that stage green is high consciousness. It is a high consciousness worldview and many of the tactics are carried out with noble intentions. But as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So Stage Green will fall into some traps, they'll push for initiatives that disrupt society in unanticipated ways at times. They'll urge people to change, thinking that they're being virtuous, but really when they do this, they're dividing society. Some people aren't ready to change, and Green is a little bit unaware of that. They think they are doing good no matter what. Many people who are in stage green have forgotten what it was like when they themselves were in lower consciousness states, and the irony is they don't realize that if others condemned them while they were in those stages, they would have never reached green. Now not all of stage green falls for this trap, but a good portion do. And this is ultimately the problem with cancel culture in general. Well-meaning people are just making it harder and harder to go through stages of growth. And in a green society, it can have the effect of permanently labeling certain people and organizations as toxic, which creates resentment and prevents their own progress and awakening. So as a final warning before we get into these tactics, I wanna warn you that people in stage orange will often present like they're in stage green for a selfish end. So that's really not green. All right, now that that's all out of the way, I think you guys are ready to learn those green tactics. All right, first off, we have spiritual exploration. There are many spiritual concepts much of modern America doesn't understand, and these ideas often intrigue stage green. There's also many green atheists who are so against corrupt clergymen and false evangelicals that they may turn atheistic and see the various religions as evil. It's a real shame, but there are these people as well, but most of them aren't atheistic. In the 60s and 70s, there was an emergence of hippies. If you see a hippie as a negative word, then you're probably an orange or below, because orange doesn't respect green, otherwise orange would be green. But this is because hippies challenge the status quo, which of course creates controversy in orange. Eastern mysticism made its way into American consciousness, and what it did was awake America to a new set of values that are good values, but just America's consciousness was close to them. And one issue, though, is that a lot of the greatest teachings of the East are what made their way to the West, creating the illusion that the Eastern cultures are wiser and more spiritual than the Western ones, but it was just the process of elimination, only the good ones made it. So it's a form of survivorship bias. All of the strange and ineffectual forms of Buddhism and Taoism weren't brought to the West, creating the illusion of a perfect spiritual community. So let's not go too far in claiming the Eastern, Eastern faiths have all the answers and they're better than ours, because that's not true. The, the real truth is both of them were inspired by the same truth. They just apply to a different political group. They manifest themselves in a different way. And they're connected. 
and this leads into the next tactic, multicultural exploration. So sage green people realize that their culture is just one of many, and they'll often denounce their old culture in favor of redefining a new one. Um, they can see culture itself as toxic in some cases. Prominent stage green thinker Terence McKenna has referred to a culture as a disease. Of course, hippie culture is itself also a culture. It fails to realize that. So the argument is self-defeating. Stage green never realizes this until it evolves to stage yellow, if it ever does, which it usually doesn't. And, but as Terence McKenna grew, he became more of a stage yellow thinker. And the next tactic is charity and activism. Doing charity work where one sees a problem and applies a solution, or offering help in a direct way, is a good alternative to throwing money at problems. Money is rarely ideal. Only X percent of the money, I don't know the exact amount, but something like 10 percent of all of the money for a charity goes to the actual charity, whereas the rest of it is just infrastructure. In other words, giving money to people within the charity. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, good. Let, let them get their money, but it's very inefficient. You could put 100% of that money or 100% of that energy into doing the actual thing the charity is doing. If you do work within your own community, you're verifying yourself that the work is going towards the cause. And if you're a skilled person, you can have a great effect. So I don't have a lot to say about charity other than that Green really participates in it. Another Stage Green tactic is debate. The members of Stage Green, who come across their ideological rivals in the real world, won't often let things slide. They feel it makes them virtuous to publicly call them out and get into arguments. Now, they're, they're not like Stage Red about it, they're not all like aggressive and it, hurling insults, but they are a bit snide in it and they do feel a bit self-righteous and oftentimes on some level they're right in their arguments and certainly they have a much more accurate worldview than the majority of the country but they're not perfect keyboard warriors lecture people and argue about why they're bad in something they said or did in stage green doing this makes them feel morally superior they don't really understand that people below stage orange will not respond well at all to their arguments, even if they are correct. So stage green commonly mistakes yellow to be part of stage orange, and they don't recognize someone who is higher consciousness than them because they see their own views as supreme. Another stage green tactic is protest. Green hates dominant corporations and will often protest corporate initiatives. The orange inequality is leveled out in green as green attempts to rearrange society in a way that reallocates resources the way they see fit. This is why oftentimes you'll find socialists, Marxists, and progressive rebels of all shapes and sizes, although they'll appear all over the political spectrum. There are certainly stage green conservatives as well. There are stage green every, everything. Another stage green tactic is shaming and blaming. Green thinks it sits atop the moral high ground. Um, green shuns those who don't replicate their principles. So you'll find a lot of stage green people who just won't even talk to certain types of people. But in green, ideological deviants become canceled. They're denied opportunities and they're denied respect. Now, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing in all cases. Certainly, I don't believe child molesters deserve any respect, for example. Um, that being said, uh, a lot like people who are being called racist, some of them really aren't racist. They just said something which was politically incorrect, misinterpreted. They're still shunned. So Green does do a lot of good shunning and a lot of bad shunning, so to speak. Certainly, somebody who is actively racist should be shunned, but they're a little bit overboard sometimes. Green doesn't always see the nuance in every argument, although it does have a lot of insight on some. So yeah, it's not ideal and it's not always properly applied, but when they get it right, it sure beats war and violence. As technology continues to improve, it'll only become easier and easier to catch people slipping, and it'll become 
more and more apparent that if we cancel everyone who doesn't align with us properly, we'll have to cancel everybody, pretty much. So shaming and blaming is better than maiming, but it is far inferior to patiently raising others' consciousness and forgiving them for their in ignorance. For Roseanne Barr to make one racially insensitive joke on Twitter and then to have her permanently taken off her own show is absurd to me. I mean, come on. She made a dumb tweet. Obviously, it was a detestable joke. It was stupid. It wasn't funny. But I don't think she me meant anything at all by it. Anyways, everyone in the world who communicates regularly will eventually make a mistake, especially in a society that makes certain truths taboo. Another tactic for stage green is environmental legislation. Green has no faith in others to be able to understand the merits of their ecological activity. They don't believe common people are trustworthy enough to incorporate these things on their own. So they seek to control others through the law, kind of like blue, but it's on another level now. The subject of the laws is a bit different and it sounds a bit better, but it's still imperfect law. So, as I've mentioned before, it is higher consciousness to inspire people not to litter than to force it. Limits on hunting and mining are, of course, necessary, but they're neither the most effective nor the easiest to enforce. Far better is to inspire people just not to do it. It's not easy. There's no one way to do it. It's different with everybody, but a truly wise teacher can detect these things and bring it out in, in them through a wide variety of methods. And that's what turquoise and yellow is, especially turquoise. And similar to inspiration, much greater is to instill a love for nature. Another tactic for green is tearing down borders. One might find nudists and swingers in green. They have overcome the social stigmas and sexual hangups that a lot of the lower consciousness people fall into. So yeah. Many in green have overcome their hang-ups about the human body. Another aspect to tearing down borders is how interracial and intercultural ventures are explored. And the actual borders are relaxed, allowing for freer travel and shared community resources. So people from other communities are welcome in with open arms and at all prior stages other people were dealt with tentatively. There was skepticism and mistrust of other cultures, but in green, they truly see every person as a fellow human being, except for the ones which are ideologically opposite to them. And another border which green has torn down is the border of their own feelings. They're ready to discuss how they feel about everything, with others so you can be creative and maybe think of a few more ways stage green has re relaxed their borders of all types stage green will often participate in meditation and yoga so stage green people who like the ideas of interconnectedness are getting in touch with their spiritual side and they begin to dabble in meditation and yoga they study how to arrange their legs, whether they should be sitting, how they should pose their hands in ways that are said to tap into chakras. Um, they time themselves and follow other rituals in a sort of exploration. Now, there's a lot to be said about meditation, and there are far higher states than the stage green approaches to meditation. It's a bit naive, but it's going in the right direction. And maybe I'll even do an advanced video about it in another video. I don't personally um, practice any sort of ritualistic meditation, but I've kind of penetrated the subject to its core. So I do have a lot to talk about. If you guys are interested, let me know. Stage Green members love to promote the fact that they do yoga or meditation because they think it'll make them appear mystical and deep. As I've mentioned earlier, it's kind of like virtue signaling to them. They think it'll help them achieve some sort of virtue, and while they can certainly get a lot out of these practices, they don't quite understand its profundity and nuance 
another green tactic is to achieve hallucinogenic states. <laughs> Um, partly due to Green's desire to escape our stage orange society, a portion of them either regularly or just occasionally takes hallucinogenic material. These can have the uh, effect of feelings of interconnectedness and they can help escape the materialist inclinations of stage orange. They provide an alternate perspective which just might help raise their consciousness Unfortunately, there is a common misconception that getting high on powerful hallucinogens will make somebody enlightened. That's like saying giving someone a ladder makes them taller. It gives them the view from somebody who's taller, but they have to come down eventually. Many people in stage green who have benefited from hallucinogenic drugs irresponsibly go on to promote these drugs to the general public. This is another trap that green falls into. These drugs are not for everyone. Still, to those with a healthy psychology and a keen sense of responsibility and moderation, some of these drugs might pr provide the alternate perspectives which can help them. But again, it's not recommended, it's not ideal, but it works for some people. Just know they're not the only way, nor are they the best way to experience oneness. I think early in his life, this guy that I was talking about earlier, Terence McKenna, he really promoted them and said everyone should do them and should try them and should push their limits. As he got older, that changed. In fact, in his later years in life, he actually died relatively young due to some sort of brain aneurysm. And it would be naive to say the drugs didn't have some effect but yeah he had a bit more of a different tone to to his discussions on the drugs in his later years all right so we got really deep into those green tactics i want to thank you for watching and sticking with better you better world more to come for spiral dynamics as well as my many other projects thank you